All right, let's build our first orchestration. We are going to build an approval process that is linked to contract objects. So when I create a contract object, I want to automatically seek approval for it from my manager. And when my manager re responds, I want to find out what they said and then be able to take additional steps. So there's going to be two parts to this. There's going to be the part that my manager has to do. and There's going to be the part that I had to do. And we're going to design those as two steps in our orchestration. And I've already built the step flows for each of those two steps. Now, those are regular screen flows. Um, here is a example of the step flow for my manager, where they are going to be asked to uh, approve or reject. And you can see here that uh, there's a simple screen for them to fill out. And that's basically uh, all that's happening here. Um, and we can also go back and look at the at the step flow that I, I am going to fill out when they are done. And this is basically after my managers responded. I'm going to find out what the approval result is. I'm going to see any comments they had. And then if they approved it, I'm going to go on to a screen that completes the contract. All right, so let's start building the orchestration itself. I'm going to click New Flow. And I'm going to click All Plus Templates and go down here to Orchestrator. Now, if you don't see this, then your org hasn't been activated yet. And you need to request that it be enabled to build orchestrations. You can see that there's two uh, templates for orchestrations. One is sort of standard auto launch, uh, run this when you click the run button, but we're gonna do a record triggered orchestration that operates just like a record triggered flow. And uh, so let's associate this with contract and we're gonna have it work with Every time, a con every time any contract is created. Uh, and let's create a stage. And this will be just a one stage orchestration. It's fairly simple, about as simple as an orchestration can get actually. And we'll call this, um, uh, let's see, we'll call this manage contract creation, say. And I don't have any, I, I'm gonna need to add some steps here. So this actually does something, but for the moment, I'm gonna save this as orchestration, manage contract creation and save it. And if I was to click activate here, then every time I create a new contract, this is an, an instance, uh, a run, an execution of this, um, orchestration definition is going to run. And keep in mind that this is just flow builder orchestrations for all their special powers and capabilities are modeled in flow builder as flows that just happen to have some of these extra tools uh, turned on. So the only other thing that you uh, need to make sure uh, when you are starting your orchestrations for the first time is make sure that you have an organization-wide email address specified. Orchestrator sends a lot of email notifications. And if you don't have one of these, then you're going to get some email failures that are not going to be very clear. So uh, this is particularly important if you're getting this up on running on a scratch org or uh, some new dev edition or something like that, where you might not have this already turned on. Okay, so let's add some steps. We're going to have two steps. The first step is where the, the manager is actually asked to approve. Let's call this manager approves or rejects. Uh, and we want this to start instantly, automatically, whenever this stage starts. The stage, since this is the first stage in the flow, it's gonna start as soon as this trigger happens. So we want this to immediately happen. And then here we specify our step flow. I've got the step flow that I want right here. Uh, I'm also going to specify the context record. And basically 
here I am, man, I, I'm basically saying, hey, look, the record that is actually triggers this flow, that's the one to link this, so this, uh, this orchestration to. And then I need to assign uh, uh, this. Now, in future versions and future releases, we'll have the ability to assign this to roles um, and the ability to dynamically invoke these and pass in values. For the pilot, you have to specify usernames. So I am going to specify the username of the manager account. Uh, and, and I'm done with that. Now recommend saving after each step um, because the we don't have all the validation in and you will get, sometimes you will get confusing error messages. And generally, if you get an error message trying to save, it almost always means that there's some required field here that isn't filled out. Um, and we didn't, we weren't able to properly give you the red message right then and there. Okay, so then the second step here is going to be, uh, come when it comes back to me, it'll be complete contract configuration. And I don't want this to start at the same time as the stage, however. I want this to only start when this step is complete. And I can do that. I can say start when another step completes. And you can see that I can select the first step right here. Now understand that that completion for this particular triggering event, that really just means that this the step flow associated with this step successfully finishes at least one time. And um, so it doesn't, this, this completion concept doesn't actually involve the approval or rejection. That's kind of specific to this orchestration, but completion is a step concept that applies to every step. And you'll see that there are some other ways to determine when a step is complete. Okay, so now let's select our complete configuration. Now this one takes inputs, which will be a familiar concept to most viewers. Um, now let's think about what we want here. As you'll recall, uh, we have in the first step flow, the manager can type in comments and can click on approve or reject. And in the second step flow, the user who created the contract is actually going to uh, see that information. So we have to we have to pass, we have to flow the information out of the end of this step and into the beginning of this step. And that's a very important concept to take outputs from steps because the steps are where the work is going to get done. They're where the bulk of the work is going to get done. So we need to get the information out of here and into here. And we've got the inputs right here that we're going to be able to pass in. So let's first look at how we pass information out of this first step. Let's go to the manager, approve or reject. We've got the screen fields right here, but what we need to do is we need to create corresponding variables that are available for output. This essentially gives you control as the builder of the flow to say, I am willing to publish this selected action. It's essentially a security mechanism. You don't always want information that is managed inside your flow to be available uh, downstream. So you specifically specify what you want to actually pass out of that step flow using standard manual variables. And then likewise with this comments variable, I, I have this here. And what you may have noticed is I'm actually using the outputs of the screen components as the default values. So essentially the user fills out these screen components that's used to set these variables and they're passed out. Meanwhile, over here in the next step, it wants to consume that data. So as you might expect, there are variables here that are available for input. And that's why approval result and comments show up right here and here. So now that we have that sort of those variables published in the way we want to, we can access them and map them in here. If you go down here, you see a new concept called steps. So I can click on the manager approves or rejects step, look at its outputs and see whatever I have marked as available for use downstream in the orchestration. So here I'm gonna map the output selected 
uh, action to this input called approval result. And here I'm going to map the output comments to this input comments. And now I've got information flowing from this step into this, this additional step. And we, we still need to uh, specify the context record here. The username of this particular admin account is flowadmin at gs0.deved.org. And I'm going to save this and activate it. And now let's go create a contract and see what happens. Now, as part of this, I have set up viewers uh, so that you can see the email accounts and see the notification coming in. So let's see. Over here, we have uh, Jalen Manager's inbox. Uh, so this is where we expect the first notification to show up. And then here I have my own Adam user uh, uh, account right, right here as well. So let's go, you've got this activated, let's go create a contract. Notice that there is a component here that says work guide. This is part of Orchestrator. It's a new component that shows the work and brings it right to where it can most effectively be done. Now, because the, the that first step is not assigned to me, it's assigned to my manager, I don't see anything right here. That's And that's just fine. Now, if we go over and refresh, you can see that uh, the notification has come in. So in the pilot, this is just a simple notification. In the future, you're going to have rich control over how the notification works. And this link will take this user back to uh, that record page. So we're back. So I'm so Jalen Manager. Remember, we're logged in here as Jalen Manager. Jalen Manager has gone to the same record page as me, Adam User. But notice that Jalen's work guide has some work in it. So. Um, and this is the step flow that you've seen a couple times already. Uh, one thing to note, this link is very valuable. It's currently in the pilot. The only way to get to the pages of uh, history and status data. Uh, so I'm going to load that into another tab before I do this work and finish it up. Great job. Let's close this contract and click finish. So Jalen Manager, done with his work, he can move on to another uh, project. Uh, meanwhile, if we look, if we go refresh here, see that a new work notification has come back to me. Uh, and if we go and look here, you can see that there was a transition. Uh, when I loaded this page a few seconds ago, right before we actually had Jalen approve, approve this, you could see that the first step was in progress and the second step was not started. But if I refresh this now, you can see that there's been a transition. That first step is completed and now the second step is in progress. And that transition was what also generated this email notification. And now, I can also refresh, this link is gonna take me right back to this page, so I can just refresh. And you can see that now I have work here. And you can see that the data has flowed out of that first step into this second step and is visible on a screen of this step.